And since the start of the pandemic, we've been forced to forego some of the fundamentals of human interaction, going months without hugging or even being in the same room as our loved ones. But one of the underreported sacrifices of lockdown has been the ability to debate freely and openly face to face particularly about the pandemic itself. Well, Claire Fox, obviously a friend of this show, director of the Academy of Ideas, says we can't let COVID continue to restrict the urgent need to debate key social, economic and political issues and is behind an event devoted to reanimating the public square. The Battle of Ideas Festival's Open for Debate Day in Westminster this Sunday is dedicated to moving away from Zoom and social media spats based on the premise that it's the frisson of hashing out issues in person that spurs progress and changes hearts and minds. And Claire, it's great to have you back on the show. It's so true, isn't it? COVID has been used by leaders all around the world, not just in the UK, to shut down debate. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not entirely convinced that I kind of mal malignly used it in that way, but the consequence of taking us away from social interaction has meant that we haven't been able to have arguments or, or discussions. We've all been reduced to looking at, you know, social media and, and no disrespect, I, I'm as much a fan of it as anyone else. But you know that it's not real life. And I think that when you get in a room, I mean, we've had a taste of freedom recently, but when you kind of get in a room or go to the pub with a group of people, Actually, through the course of arguing out a subject, you actually change your mind on things. You, you, you know, you, some of the one-sided nature of what you think, I think that some of the debates that you have here, people change, they, they listen a bit, but certainly when you've got a big crowd. So it's actually on Saturday, but, but, but that's... Saturday. Well, Saturday, it's all right, Saturday, Saturday. That's actually a better day for it, it a to be day. honest. But the, but the point that we wanted to make was, um, look, we have been deprived of our ability to collectively try and solve problems. To take on arguments, we're having discussions on racism, on levelling up, on um, education policies and academic freedom, and actually on how to win an argument and uh, how to win an argument in a period of conformity. And I'm saying that because we chose not to discuss COVID because there is an element of which we become slightly obsessive about mm. talking about COVID. And I think it's sometimes good to remember that what we should be doing is tackling the problems of a post pandemic world because we've got to rebuild yeah. society now we do are you sure some of the attempts to shut down debate though haven't been malevolent because you know you, you think about the government and and actually there have been times when throughout this pandemic they have been massively benefited by the fact that mps haven't been yeah. at westminster in person number one they haven't been able to plot you know, which is something that happens yeah. face to face. Number two, they haven't been able to question in Parliament face to face. So you haven't had uh, boos of, of, of the, the Prime yeah, Minister agree, so much agree, in, yeah. in, uh, in PMQs, for example. You know, are, are you sure that actually, to begin with, maybe they thought, oh, you know, we have to do this because of social distancing. But are you sure they haven't thought actually some of these uh, more virtual forms of debate are better for us? So the, you make an important point, and I've obviously noticed in the Lords, I mean, I've made a point of, you know, I actually... You're there. I joined the Lords during the pandemic, and it's been very weird because there's only been 30 people allowed in the chamber, yeah. all this sort of thing. So I've... Is, is that the max? That's that's the, the max. That has been the max during the time. But I, I thought, I'm not going to zoom in. I'm going to actually learn the job and actually go in. So that's one thing. And it makes a huge difference. But you had the a place choice. Not, you could have but, zoomed. Is that right? Mostly people zoomed. Okay. So, but the point I'm making is that I'm agreeing with you that in, in a it's fairly empty chamber, it sterilises debate. So you're trying to talk to the minister, but there's no sort of sense of a big packed chamber. So at the technical level of parliamentary scrutiny, whether in the Commons or in the Lords, there's been an absolute absence of that and a ghost uh, parliament. And I do think that Parliament should have been given an exemption. I think that MPs and peers should have been demanding to come back in full and absolutely got on with it. I mean, if you can have an exemption for UEFA officials for sports, then I think that democracy deserves that exemption too. But, I, but what I meant was, and I think that there's been an opportunism there. I mean, I'm not suggesting that the government haven't thought... Oh, they didn't it's, plan it, clearly. No, it, that's handy when you haven't got them breathing it. But in terms of the public, slightly differently, this is the bit where you are right, which is one of the shocking aspects of the pandemic, was that when we were all demobilised and told we had to sit at home on the couch and kind of listen for the latest announcement, 
people were frightened. People didn't know initially what to think. And so they talked to kind of like joining WhatsApp groups and trying to work things out and looking on the web and trying to understand the virus and trying to get... And then they found that innocent questions, you know, like saying... Well, does anyone understand this part of the virus? Suddenly, somebody and somebody would say, oh, it was a great video interview with some doctors in America. And then YouTube would take it down. And then the government were describing anything that didn't fit a particular narrative um, and actually, actually pressurising uh, the big tech to take things down. They were saying, that is misinformation. Now, that then created this atmosphere of censoriousness that made people, I think, become suspicious yeah. of official information, and it's fueled... Well, there's been a lack of scientific debate at a Absolutely. time where you could argue scientific debate has never been more important. But I think it was also about trusting us to say we can sort out the wheat from the chaff. We, look, there are some mad ideas around but that's what public debates around where you can start yeah. saying that's a crazy idea when they start banning things or start creating an atmosphere where they say that is a dangerous piece of information that sadly fuels conspiratorial thinking because people start going i want to find out then they go into the dark web so i suppose you know what we're doing at the academy of ideas and what we try to do forever is to just say the more you shine light on discussions and debates the more you can actually sort out the merits and demerits of any argument you can start to you know people do have some wacky ideas and mm. you should be able to say and hold them to account for them and so i think by the way we've all fallen into the danger of echo chambers of caricaturing each other. I mean, I'm very sceptical of a lot of the lockdown measures, but I can't stand how on, as it were, my side of the argument, quite a lot of people have said, why are those people, stupid people, brainwashed sheeple, wandering around, believing over the government? You think that's no way to conduct a public conversation. We need to, as citizens, take ourselves and each other seriously and have proper conversations. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to doing that at the weekend. And understand why people have got the... Understand why people have got the views they've yeah. got. Absolutely. And there's lots of reasons why yeah. over yeah. the past yeah. months. Well, look, let me bring in my superstar panel, Claire Fox. Today we have John Gaunt, Daisy McAndrews and Abby Roberts. John, do you have a question for Claire Fox? Yeah, I think one of the problems, Claire, do you not think that uh, anonymous accounts on Twitter need to be got rid of? You know, I say some pretty outrageous things, but it's my name. You know who's saying it, and then we can have that debate. I think one of the problems we've got at the moment, particularly during this period, is that people can just lob in the grenades, uh, the defamation, the libel, uh, without any comeback on them. What do you think? I actually worry about this argument about abolishing anonymity because there is quite a lot of good reasons why people might want to be anonymous. I mean, if you look at people who are trying to debate around gender critical issues, for example, they might well lose their job if they say certain things in the in that thorny, toxic issue around trans rights. So, and also people for all sorts of, anyway, I mean, I don't, whatever the reasons. The funny thing is, is that most of the people who lob in the grenades and cause trouble, to be honest, are not anonymous. They're very well known. They've got huge <laughs> followings and they can say things which can have the effect of cancelling people. Because if you're a well-known personality with a huge following and you then say something, you call someone like, uh, you know, basically, uh, you, you, you imply that someone's a racist because they didn't go along with a particular uh, 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 version of, you know, sure. whatever. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Then that can have a very damaging but, effect. So I think it's a, a, a red herring, I suppose. But with your logic that you've just been talking about, you could shine light on that, couldn't you? Well, so you could, but I just don't know that... that person said something which was clearly wrong... Yeah. I could, but if you've, got, if you've got 25 followers and somebody's just, like, dobbed you over and called you something, right, it's not that they're anonymous, it's that they're, well, that they're well known and they've just said it in public. Mm. So I'm just saying the issue of anonymous accounts, it seems to me, mm. I, I defend the right for people to be anonymous. Mm. That's the point I'm making. I understand that sometimes it's irritating that some of the most malevolent, nasty tweets that I get are from people I can't find out who they mm. are. Yeah. But the issue is, why are people being malevolent and nasty and libelous in the first place? And okay. we need to try and raise our game. Daisy McAndrew. Claire, this is um, obviously you doing what you love doing and having all these debates and you know, putting your event on, on on Saturday. But how much or do you think that there will be damage to the, the, the event by people being a bit rusty? And I wonder what you think will be different this time, <laughs> having had you know, have, us all having been locked up for so long? 
Do you know what, Daisy? I can't tell you how nervous I am. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, exactly that, you know, the Academy, you know, you were saying about X Factor 17 years. I mean, the Academy of Ideas has been going for over 20 years. We've been doing the uh, Battle of Ideas for about 17 years. And this is just a taster for the big event in October uh, uh, the 9th and 10th. But all I keep, and I've, therefore I've put on a lot of public events. I produce events every year, hundreds of them. And I keep thinking, what will it be like when we all get in the same room together? Will we know how to behave? And one of the things I'm most fearful of is, is that this lockdown period, people have become very shrill, haven't they? Mm. There's a kind of intolerance on all yeah. sides of arguments. I can't stand the way that people won't listen to each other. It's almost as though we can't hear each other anymore. And so... Yeah, because we haven't had to put up with We haven't had to put up, because we haven't had to kind of mediate yeah. the, the public square. We've been yeah. doing it, shouting... Yeah. Uh, in, in we the, live, the We've back. literally lived in bubbles. Exactly, yeah. in this horrible way. And I think you do learn to tolerate, don't you? Kind of, when yeah. you go and have a discussion with people at work or, you know, in your trade union or down the pub or wherever it is or at one of our events, you hear all these different views and you think, oh, I like a bit of that and I don't... Mm. Whereas, you know what it's like, you say... You, put, you can't fly an idea on, on social media at the moment and people go... You <laughs> crazy Not blah that. blah. How Not dare you? He's like, oh, Covid I denier. Thought, how did that? Transphobic. Happen? One of those. Yeah. Abby Roberts. Final question to you. Yeah, hi, hi Claire. Um, I, I wanted to know there was there was a, a poll. I think it was you, Gov. I might be wrong about that. A poll uh, uh, about attitudes to free speech across all the age groups, and it was something really astounding. Number of people who weren't sure whether we should have free speech. Um, and the second part of my question is. With universities and, and young people, young young people, um, should we have new institutions with people like yourself, um, sort of starting from scratch with the free speech thing, or do you think universities are savable as they are? No. The two big questions. I think the universities are savable just, but they'll have to be saved by the students. And I'm very enthusiastic about a new campaign called Free Speech Champions, which is students themselves arguing for academic freedom and trying to have a kind of cultural shift. So that, because one of the, the, the reasons why you rightly point out, Abby, so many people say, I'm not sure about free speech, is it's become fashionable long before COVID to say the most important thing is that I'm protected and that I'm safe. And I thought that was a very odd thing for 18, 19, 20-year-olds to constantly want to be safe mm. from ideas. They want to be comfortable. They don't want to be challenged. And that was what safe spaces were. We now have entered into the COVID area where we've seen safetyism versus mm. free speech or freedom very directly pitted against each other. So what I, what I think needs to happen is, you know, old fogies like me, you know, I... I, I can argue and put forward and create a, a space for free speech. Mm. But what we really need is to encourage new generations of young people to be courageous enough to say that they will listen to all ideas, take them all on board, yep. work out the best ones, work out what they think and not say that they're scared all the time, but, you know, really take a few risks intellectually. That's what I'm trying to encourage. Very good point. Claire Fox, thank you for being here for Uncancelled and the Battle of Ideas Festival's Open for Debate Day in Westminster this Saturday. We'll speak again soon.